an update, an update, another update from Kari Rittenhouse, right? This is turning into a Kari Rittenhouse channel at the moment, right? I'm not sure what's going on here, but this is a really fascinating story. So I'm sure most of you are aware of the situation that transpired over the weekend in Wisconsin, Kenosha, um, involving a 17-year-old kid who unfortunately had to kill two people and severely injured one because he felt like his life was in danger and you know whole lots of debates coming out there in terms of guns uh, right right to bear arms it was underage did he cross state lines blah de, blah 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 eventually the kid ends up getting arrested and he's charged right at the moment he's being charged for i think murder and homicide and i think negligence or something just some really heavy charges he's got at the moment right and on paper it seemed like those charges would stick. It seemed like from what we saw so far in the videos, this kid went around and essentially kind of endangered, you know, the safety of others by letting off shots indiscriminately in front of protesters and severely, you know, injuring one and killing two. But then as more details came out of regarding the story, it kind of painted a different picture where we saw actually a kid who was purposely trying to de-escalate the situation, trying to help his local community, um, trying to help obviously local businesses and was put in a position where he had no other option but to try and defend himself. And of course, I'm still, I'm sort of the position <coughs> where I don't think that kid should have been there in the first place. You know, the story supposedly goes that he was there because he was helping out his friend and his friend then said, hey, take this gun, let's go and help out these businesses that need our help. Um, he didn't obviously stop crossing his state lines because he was there already prior to the riots. But I still don't think it's a smart decision for adults to be asking for the help of or requesting the help of 17 year olds teenagers to go and protect their businesses with long rifles it just doesn't make any sense i would think in my opinion again if you're you know if you're thin on the ground in terms of hired help fair enough especially if the police are being told to stand down but i just don't think you should be putting children in that position because i, I refer to him as a child right because he's a teenager um but of course his side of the story does there's there's some relevance to it right if you look at the video it does appear as if the first guy that goes to try and tackle him um the winebacker guy i think i think the dude who basically said the n-word um earlier on in the videos that we saw on social media it appears as if the person behind him had a gun and he was trying to fire shots off at car written house he then reacts to that and he doesn't know who has the gun or who doesn't have the gun so he has to kind of you know um, nullify that target it happens to be the first dude who just hits him over the bag and then of course it escalates to what we see later on with him scrambling on the floor and then fatally shooting two more or fatally shooting one person injuring the other so I guess that defense is out there and Karin House's lawyer came out and essentially uh, put more, shed more light on the situation and kind of essentially said what I said the other day in terms of the statement. But let's hear a little bit of it now via a, uh, what's this, Tucker Carlson interview actually, where he sort of kind of lays it out here, play it. A 17-year-old called Kyle Rittenhouse has been charged with two counts of first-degree murder for shootings that took place in Kenosha, Wisconsin recently. There's a lot of confusion about what exactly happened. But in at least two of the shootings, video shows Rittenhouse running away, being attacked, and then firing. What does this add up to? Well, some on the left don't want to know. Antifa, according to accounts online, is trying to figure out what cell Rittenhouse is being held in, presumably so they can That's kill insane. Him. That's insane. So what's the state of the case? What will Rittenhouse's lawyers argue when it does go to court? To find out, we're speaking tonight to John Pierce. He's representing Kyle Rittenhouse. He's from the firm Pierce Bainbridge, and we're happy to have him on tonight. Mr. Pierce, thanks so much for coming on. So, Hi, Tucker. Thank you so much for having us to uh, get the true story out of what happened in Kenosha. That well, night. I'm eager to know, because this is one of those stories that obviously has intense partisan interest, and there, there's a lot of confusing video. But what is, broadly speaking, the defense that you will mount on behalf of Kyle Rittenhouse? This is 100% self-defense, Tucker. Um, Kyle, um, he's a good kid. He's a lifeguard. Um, Kenosha was burning down. Um, actually, when he got done with work uh, that day, uh, he went to the high school with some friends to try to remove some graffiti. Uh, so he was working there. He was obviously didn't cross state lines. So all that stuff you heard earlier uh, via certain outlets in the press makes you build think. I wonder if they were purposely trying to paint him out to be this kind of rogue white nationalist or whether they just kind of um, believed what they read online based on some of the information of people that were maybe on the ground who have 
purposely sort of trying to mislead and point people in the wrong direction. I'm not too sure, but the more you read into it, the more it just seems like this kid's a bit of a dork. He's maybe a little bit of a do-gooder in terms of, you know, because I don't know, if this is me and I'm 17 and I live locally, the last thing I'm doing is bearing arms and trying to protect businesses that I don't own or do have no attachment to myself or my family it makes absolutely zero sense but this is the guy that he is he's obviously somebody that's infatuated with the police um he's infatuated he's not infatuated but he's you know he has an interest in being a police officer i think he's in the cadets um so he obviously takes pride in the idea of looking after his local community he has that kind of civic duty that civic pride and maybe it's more mature maybe he's a more he's a more mature person than i am right because even in this age i'm in now i still wouldn't go out there and defend businesses that aren't mine just for the sake of just because i happen to live in that community that i that i don't think isn't my place i think that's the place of the police and the governments to kind of come in and maintain law and order but i do understand if you live there and you're already suffering the ill effects of COVID-19. You're already suffering the ill effects of a dwindling economy and your own prospects are going down the drain. You are not going to be happy when you see your local community going up in flames, regardless of what the issue is. You're just not going to stand for it. You really aren't going to stand for it. Um, it's just unfortunate it happens to be a kid that's 17, full of life, you know, very, I'm assuming, um, you know, is uh very much married to his ideology or whatever that may be, may be right especially at that age you're kind of forming your uh, personality based on the things that you kind of believe and see via media in some way shape or form so he's rock hard uh, not rock hard to take that back so he's uh steadfast in his um you know um impression of how he should go about protecting his local community and a place and a position that he kind of plays in it, i would imagine um, after that, they got a call from a local business person who owns three businesses in downtown Kenosha. Uh, two of those three businesses had been burnt to the ground, and this business owner uh, simply wanted to uh, desperately protect what was left of his life's work, so he asked for help. Sh shouldn't he be calling the police? Al and his friends decided uh, that nobody was doing anything to protect that community. Okay, fair and enough. And they decided that they would answer that call and help to protect uh, that business. Um, Kyle actually took a first aid kit downtown because he was concerned that there would be wounded protesters uh, okay. downtown. Um, and in fact, he took a firearm because Kenosha so had become a war zone. Yeah, uh, right. Any sensible person would take that. Um, and him and his friends stayed on the premises and protected that property. Um, and then uh, he, some events started to unfold whereby he was trying to uh, treat medically wounded protesters and ultimately he got trapped out on the street out in the open because the riot police uh, had moved and of course this is his lawyer so of course he's going to paint in the same way but i'm still not sure why he should like should there be some blame placed on the business owner that decided to um, enlist the help of a group of teenagers armed with long guns to protect his businesses shouldn't have he done it himself uh, maybe maybe he's incapable of doing so and he's an older gentleman but requesting the help of teenagers to come and protect your businesses and knowing what may transpire is just really reckless and really kind of the opposite of what an adult should be doing right in that position i don't know it's a bit bizarre for me in that way it kind of reminds me of in a really base in a kind of you know the worst analogy or worst example ever but it reminds me back in the day when my mom sometimes would want like imagine if your parents wanted to go park in a shopping mall car park and you know there was no spaces and the sudden there was a space that would make you run out and go stand in the space right so you can hold it and the idea was that because you're a kid no one's gonna go and kind of like ram you out of the space right they're gonna be like oh, as a child and they're gonna let you kind of get off it but you're gonna have to face the embarrassment or you're gonna have to just withstand the abuse that you're gonna get for the 15 to 50 seconds or whatever and it gets to your with your before your parents get there with a the car it was always super embarrassing but again it's not good parenting right sending your kid out to go and hold the parking lot space in the hopes that they uh, cross paths with a reasonable adult that doesn't you know turn them into bloody tarmac paint isn't the best idea <clears throat> neither is kind of requesting the help of teenagers to come protect your businesses the line far enough down that they were between himself and that premises so what i have read that he brought a firearm as a juvenile 17 across state lines 
a lot of people that is incorrect that's incorrect tell us where the gun came that is from. incorrect that 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 is incorrect uh that firearm uh never crossed state lines that is a legal firearm in the state of wisconsin wisconsin is an open carry state that charge is incorrect as a matter of state law. Um, uh, as a 17-year-old, he was legally entitled to have that firearm in his possession. Moreover, uh, we are going to be arguing that the Second Amendment and Title 10, uh, Section 246 of the United States Code renders that charge and any ordinance that that charge would be based on uh, blatantly unconstitutional under these circumstances. Right. Okay, well, so, so he didn't cross over state lines, right? That was one of the charges. But the odd thing I'm trying to understand, so you're allowed to have a gun in this state right cool <clears throat> but does that mean you can just have one so if i happen to be i guess because he's born there maybe that's that's one of the stipulations you have to be born in that state in order to get it but if you if, if somebody's got one that they own legally if your friend has one legally and, and they give it to you you're allowed to just walk around with that even though it's not yours it's not registered to you register your friend and what are you not meant to get a permit yourself to carry a gun in the first place that's a very odd rule isn't it Unless he's kind of assuming that everyone knows that he probably would have a gun license because obviously he's a bit of a um, gun aficionado and obviously isn't a cadet, so they would assume he'd have one. But I don't really get that open carry and, you know, you can conceal a weapon things laws in the US. Like, that's really strange. So if you're in a state where you're allowed guns and you and your friend has one, he could just give one to you to protect yourself whilst you're, whilst you're staying in his flat, for instance. That doesn't seem like it makes sense, but also maybe it does. I don't know. That's, and that's a really a tertiary charge anyway, because there, there are other. Let me ask you about the first shooting of Joseph Rosenbaum. Sure. The, the second two, one man was shot in the arm, the other was shot in the midsection and died. Both of them clearly, and that's obvious on video, attacked Rittenhouse. But the first shooting, was Rittenhouse fired upon before he fired? Did he believe he was fired upon? What were the circumstances of that shooting? Absolutely. There was a, the New York Times has a report and has analyzed this very closely. Uh, there was a shot that was fired as Kyle was uh, retreating, actually, uh, from a mob that had become enraged that he was trying to put out uh, fires that the arsons had set uh, and because he was trying to protect property. Um, the, the mob became enraged. They began, began screaming that uh, Kyle needed to be killed and they were going to kill him. They Jesus. started relentlessly hunting him as prey as he ran down All the right, street calm down, mate. to retreat. As he ran out of room to retreat, um, a shot uh, was fired from behind him. The New York Times has clearly uh, shown that. Uh, shortly after that, the individual, Mr. Rosenbaum, uh, who, who was leading the attack on him, uh, set upon him immediately, uh, began to assault him from behind, uh, attempted to uh, take his weapon, take his firearm, and Kyle, it, when he turned, he instantaneously had no choice but to defend himself uh, by firing because he was uh, in imminent uh, uh, danger of serious bodily harm or death. A bit excessive, I know, maybe the point he's making, and he's obviously lapping it up because he's a lawyer. He's actually going to have to, have to, you know, give it a little bit of spice. But if you watch the video and you are familiar with some of the other videos or some of the other protests, you would know that this kid wasn't going to get away with just a bit of a beating. He probably would have died if he wouldn't have defended himself with that gun. Now, the issue is, well, should he have been there in the first place? We don't know. Um, does Should you be shooting somebody because they're trying to hit over the head of a skateboard? I'm not too sure if that's a, a appropriate defense. Maybe there is, especially if you're in an open carry state. That probably is the whole point of having a gun in the first place, defending yourself, right? In that regard, because who knows if you get hit with the trucks on the side of your head, you know it could be it could be lights out for you right like skateboards are no jokes being getting hit with a skateboard is no joke getting hit with any object over your head is no joke regardless but it's just unfortunate by in all intense purposes man do you know what i mean um i guess in that in some respects you have to say the kid is a good shot because he shot three people that were trying to hurt him I think he missed with the first guy, the black dude, actually. Unfortunately, he actually missed shooting that dude, which probably would have made bigger headlines, unfortunately, too, knowing the current state in the US. I think there was a guy who kind of tried to stomp on him with boots and jeans on. I think that kid missed, and he, he or he missed shooting him or didn't shoot him on purpose. I'm not too sure what happened there. But bloody hell, man, he managed to somehow take out two people and severely injure one that actually had the gun in his hand whilst being on the floor, or the other one, especially minus the first one. But God almighty, man, the kid's a bit of a savage with a gun in it in his hand. Like, 
maybe there's an actual avenue for him somewhere away from this. But yeah, um, I can't see those charges sticking, man. I really can't. I think the the DA or the district attorney really spunked their load on that one. They they acted too quickly. They were probably too desperate to appease um, the local community who are probably baying for blood and asking to defund the police and all this sort of malarkey. And they just tried to pin him on charges that didn't make any sense, especially if they knew there was more information to come out. I don't understand because usually um, they try and pin the charges on somebody that they think that they can get a conviction from, right? They're not going to just throw any charges at you for the sake of it to appease an audience or a crowd they're gonna try and prepare as best a prosecution as they can against you so just to kind of you know label this kid a murderer when actually when you look at the video evidence of this situation especially if you take out all the context and you know take out all the other what what about isms and what ifs and stuff about whether or not you should be there and just look at the cold hard facts of it he was about to be assaulted by a mob right they were trying to come after him they're trying to take his weapon which is obviously a no-no and obviously a sign that they were trying to cause some kind of um grievous bodily harm to him you don't just take someone's weapon and then beat them up right i don't ex i don't expect that to happen so he's well within his rights to defend himself especially if he has a gun and he knows how to use it and in general you have to kind of think to yourself like you know like it doesn't really make much sense to charge this guy with murder. Like, how can you convict him of murder when it clearly gets shown that he's defending himself? Um, it's going to really be a difficult one for the DA to move forward with. But again, if they don't move forward for it, just imagine the riots. So it's two things. They could either drop the charges or lessen the charge or work out a deal. Or they could go forward with the case let it play out how it must and then hope that if they go because the, what they could do is that they could let it all play out hope that biden wins during the time and then by the time the trial gets dropped everyone's kind of forgotten about it because trump is out of office who everyone hates right they could do that or they could let it play out and then trump does win <laughs> yeah and the case does get dropped and everyone then reacts off that and just gets even more angry and more enraged because it seems like any instance of any kind of altercation between the police and minorities within the u.s especially now in this current um racial climate in the states it seems like it's just going to cause a reaction some sort of riot i think there was you've had I've, i read the other day there was riots in la i think today based upon something that happened there there's always kind of a reaction that happens so again man like sympathy for everybody involved um especially the local community having to kind of ruin deal from all of this the kid himself the man the, fem the family members of the victims and just in general it's a really really messy story but it's just a shame that no one wants to report this um in the most honest way possible and really start asking some real hard-hitting questions as to why um lawlessness was allowed to get this far where kind of teenagers were requested to render support to local businesses because they felt like they had no other option right and really try and kind of put those people and kind of force them to answer for their crimes because effectively the local governors and mayors are the ones that are responsible for this and for a large part maybe trump as well right for kind of allowing this mess to continue and not kind of stamping his foot down and really trying to maintain some kind of semblance of law and order now you're in a position where two sides of the iowa are essentially pointing guns at each other and willing to fire um it's just a very terrible state of affairs it doesn't seem like it's going to end very soon but yeah that was the update on that one